Niger, the world's seventh largest producer of uranium, is one of the poorest countries in the world and receives close to $2 billion annually in development assistance. In fact, according to the 2023 budget projections, of which the total budget is $5.53 billion, more than $2.2 billion, or around 40% of its budget, was expected to come from external partners. However, the coup that occurred in Niger on July 26, 2023, has cut short the proposed budget plans and affected Niger's economy as a whole because the coup resulted in stringent sanctions from the international community, Western nations, and the regional bloc, ECOWAS. ECOWAS as well as Western and European countries, including the United States, had previously provided aid for health, security, and infrastructure needs in Niger, but with the sanctions, all this assistance has halted. Of all the countries and blocs that impose sanctions on Niger because of the coup, ECOWAS sanctions have been the harshest so far. The bloc has suspended all commercial transactions with Niger, frozen its state assets in the regional central bank, frozen the assets of the state and state enterprises in commercial banks, and suspended all financial assistance with regional development banks. These financial sanctions by the regional bloc could lead to a default on Niger's debt repayments. ECOWAS sanctions also resulted in Nigeria cutting electricity supply to the country via the 80-megawatt burning Kebi line, while Ivory Coast suspended Nigerian imports and exports. West Africa's regional central bank, the BCEAO, also shut down its branches in Niger, citing risks to operations. France, a former colonial master and partner of Niger, also placed financial sanctions on the country. They suspended development aid and budget support with immediate effect, demanding a prompt return to constitutional order. It was reported that France's development aid for Niger, which was about $130 million in 2022, was expected to be slightly higher in 2023, but with the sanctions, Niger will not be receiving any aid from France. The United States is also not left out. Immediately after the coup, the United States, which was a major provider of humanitarian and security aid, paused assistance programs to Niger valued at more than $100 million. Three months after the coup, the U.S. officially declared the coup in Niger to be a coup and immediately cut off more than $500 million in assistance to the country. Other Western and European countries that also impose sanctions on Niger following the coup include the Netherlands, Canada, and the World Bank. All these countries suspended their direct development assistance with Niger until democratic governance was restored to the country. However, despite all this, the military government of Niger has refused to comply. They have remained defiant in the face of the sanctions and have even received support from the people of Niger and neighboring countries like Burkina Faso and Mali. Although the sanctions have had no effect on the military government's decision to restore constitutional order, they have hit Niger's more than 25 million people. The sanctions imposed on Niger have led to strong inflation of food products and even a shortage of certain medicines. Hamza Diakite, a 65-year-old Nigerian, stated that she can't remember the last time her family of eight had a good meal. Not only is food very expensive, but school supplies have also doubled in price. I also have to clothe my children and, above all, deal with their illnesses," the 65-year-old said. Some businesses in the country have also shut down due to incurring extra costs to run generators after Nigeria cut the power supply. But, even as the people of Niger feel the pinch of sanctions, many people on the streets of Niome, the capital, say they support the coup. They dismiss concerns from the West and the hardship brought by the sanctions as a worthy sacrifice. Abdu Oli, one supporter of the coup in the capital city of Niger, stated that the love of our homeland has made us forget the hard times that the entire country is going through. No one cares about this rise in the price of goods, he added. So, despite all the sanctions, Niger has remained strong, but it seems the international community is not finished with Niger. Just a few days ago, the European Union announced that it had adopted measures to impose sanctions on members of Niger's military junta. According to the EU Council, 
the 27-member bloc has taken steps to enact a framework that would empower it to impose sanctions on individuals and entities found responsible for actions that pose a threat to the peace, stability, and security of Niger. The Council specifically declared that these sanctions will target people who threaten Niger's constitutional order, democracy, or rule of law. Those who commit human rights violations or abuses will also face penalties. Sanctions will include travel bans, asset freezes, and prohibitions on sending payments to people who have been sanctioned. The European Union foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, emphasized that the EU supports the efforts of the West African bloc, ECOWAS, and noted that the move by the European Union sends a clear message that military coups come at a cost. With today's decision, the EU strengthens its support for ECOWAS efforts and sends a clear message, military coups bear costs, he said. Interestingly, this is not the first time that the European Union has sanctioned Niger. Immediately after the coup, the European Union suspended security cooperation and financial support with Niger. Now, the whole point of all these sanctions from ECOWAS, Western, and European countries, as well as the international community, is to restore the so-called constitutional order, meaning to reinstate the deposed President Mohamed Bazoum. So, the big question is, with these new sanctions imposed on Niger by the European Union, will the military government of Niger fall under the pressure to restore constitutional order? The previous sanctions have already had a significant impact, most especially on the people of Niger, and now these new sanctions from the European Union would undoubtedly add more hardship to the country. Can they continue to stand their ground? For how long will they hold? Only time will tell. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.